well over $22 billion in California would be saved by the greater efficiency of having a single payer rather than 6,000 different paying entities in California. Can you imagine 6,000 different payers, different plans? So if you provide me with health care and you rightfully want to get paid for your service, you might have to deal with thousands of different forms, <coughs> hoops, hurdles, and that eats up, as you well know, a third of your time, energy, and our health care dollar. So by making use of a system not unlike Medicare, which has a 4 or 5% administrative cost, we would save all of those tens of billions of dollars. Add to that the purchasing power of 38 million Californians with regard to the purchases of pharmaceuticals and medical durable goods such as wheelchairs, prosthetics, hearing aids, eyeglasses. That large pool of purchasing would save us, again, well over $10 billion. And then, significantly, we would invest appropriately, rather than in claims adjusters and utilization reviewers who deny us our health care, we would invest in preventive and primary care. So every child, every California, everyone would have a primary care physician. You know, we're all paying for everyone's health care now, but we're paying for the very most expensive because a child who never gets to see a doctor but has a condition that needs to be treated finally has it treated at the county emergency room. So that's a burden on the county government and of great hardship to the child and to the family and at the highest cost possible. How much do we save if we, again, make sure everyone has that primary care provider at the front end? Over a half million children in California will miss a day of school this year due to tooth decay, the most prevalent infectious disease that a child will experience before the age of 16. And it's preventable. But these children are never getting to see a dentist. Even by the age of 8, 9, 10, never visit a dentist. And when a child misses school because of ill health, that child's not prepared to succeed. And when the child returns to class, he or she's probably behind a few chapters, may still be in pain, whatever the ache or condition was, and they're not focused on their studies. And a child that's not focused on their studies is more likely to fail. And a child who fails is more likely to drop out. And if you drop out of high school in California before you finish, it's seven, you are seven times more likely to find your way into our criminal justice system. And then is it any surprise that we're the fastest growing department in California is the Department of Corrections. We're going to spend more on corrections than higher education next year. This is a red flag. So all these dots connect. When we talk about closing the achievement gap in our K through 12 system, We've got to do more than make sure that our teachers are prepared to succeed. The children must be prepared to succeed. That means they need to come to school nourished and in good health and able to focus. So all these dots connect. So with all of those tens of billions of savings and the federal dollars and everyone contributing, there is more than enough money in the system to give everyone their health care coverage and a quality health care coverage at that based on medical necessity. And so this is how things will unfold in California. We'll get it to Governor Schwarzenegger's desk for a third time. Uh, he will afford him the opportunity to veto it yet again. But even when we elect a Democratic governor in 2010 who could sign our bill in 2011, because of our initiative and referendum process, we know the industry will spend the money to gather the signatures to try and overturn that which the new governor in the legislature has created. And that will mean a ballot battle in 2012. We also have to proactively put the finance piece on the ballot for the voters to approve also. So we have to go to the ballot nonetheless. And there will be twin ballot measures. And so I figure our task is from this day until that likely ballot date in 2012, better educate Californians or whichever community you may represent to better understand what single payer is and is not, so that they'll be able to withstand, in our state, a barrage of misinformation. And how much will this industry spend? $100 million? $300 million? $500 million? Whatever it costs 
to hold on to the status quo, which is working only for them. And so that's our challenge, but we're very blessed uh, with a lot of activists. We have hundreds of organizations throughout California. We have, Don, how many chapters of Healthcare for All? 22. 22. I know there's a strong one in northern, in, in the Bay Area, in Northern California. There are any number of them. We're, we'll be in, I imagine we'll be in every one of 58 counties within the next couple of years. And we also have friends in the entertainment industry. And I know we have other speakers, so I'm going to close, but I did want to share some. We'll uh, end on a light note. Uh, we've had a great supporter in Lily Tomlin uh, over the past few years. And so, uh, Lily Tomlin, along with Elliot Gould, put together a gathering uh, at which Sheila Kuhl and I spoke uh, very recently to talk to the Screen Actors Guild Foundation. That's their activist advocacy organization of the, of the Screen Actors Guild members. And Lily brought to the breakfast uh, her latest routine. She has uh, revived her character, Ernestine. We all remember <laughs> Ernestine who used to work for the very evil phone company, right? Well, guess who she works for now? <laughs> she works for the health insurance industry, and she's done, and we're going to have 365, one for every day of the year, 30-second spots. And different members of the Screen Actor Guild have already volunteered to sign up and do their spots. We're going to put them all up online. You can go to One Care Now, and you'll find them all. Uh, the number is growing regularly. And then we're going to ask everyone and anyone to make their own 30-second spot and have a competition. And everyone can give their story or their, their take on single payer. And we'll have a competition. We'll put them all up online. And, and anyone can go online and vote and decide which is the most popular. And we'll take the most popular homemade videos and we'll use those in our paid media campaign, which means full page newspaper advertisements and television and radio commercials. And so this way we want to get more and more people engaged. So this is the script and I won't even pretend that I can do Ernestine, but I'm sure you'll follow along quite well. So we credit all of this to Lily Tomlin and she in her brilliance and in her humor pierces so succinctly what this is all about. So she's at her desk with her hair and you got it all and her piece. She says, Controlled Healthcare Insurance Corp claims department, Ernestine Tomlin. Nope, not covered. We consider that an elective procedure, meaning we elect not to pay for it. <laughs> then she snorts, I'll save you the snort. <laughs> it's not our fault you've had two heart attacks. You should have stopped at one. <laughs> of course you have a choice of doctor. Do you want the doctor we give you or not? It's your choice. <laughs> and then she hangs up. So that's her first spot. And then the second one is Controlled Healthcare Insurance Corp. Claims Department Ernestine. Nope, not covered. Being blind is a pre-existing condition. <laughs> you should have read the fine print. <laughs> we don't care if you're fed up, just that you're paid up. It's big bucks to run an insurance company. Medical care is the least of it. This kind of waste doesn't come cheap. At controlled health care, life itself is a pre-existing condition. Our prescription for it, don't get sick. You must think HMO stands for help me out. Remember, your health is our business, not our concern. <laughs> So, thank you for letting me share a few thoughts with you. I couldn't have said it any better than Congressman Kucinich. This is really about the heart and soul of America. And unfortunately, uh, time is on our side because every day, how many more tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people suffer the cruelty of the current system and then in their suffering, come and join us. We hope we can prevent and preempt some of that suffering. Thank you for all of your advocacy.